Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen. First of all, I want to say that I know it's been a while, but I'm really happy to be sitting in front of the camera again talking to you guys because, you know, I kind of miss that. I kind of miss having an outlet for my ideas and I also miss being able to help so many people out there. First of all, I really do want to check in with everyone to see, you know, how they're going during this really difficult time. For humanity um, as a collective, I really thought about making a video um, addressing the pandemic or thoughts around it, but really my thoughts don't differ from the thoughts of the rest of us. So I don't have, you know, a one size fits all model advice video for all of you. I have been using this oracle for a couple of years now. Uh, it has definitely replaced um, some older oracles that I was more familiar with in the past, such as tarot cards or reading cards, and those are just very cliche white girl science. I said it. Yeah, I received a little bit of, not hate, but some skeptical or negative responses in my uh, INFJ de-stressing video when I was using reading cards. So I'm just looking at them because I have them on my shelf right now. Um, even though I don't use them as much, they do look quite nice on display. Anyway, so that video, I did receive some comments that were like, oh, she's such a witch. Um, you know, she doesn't know what she's talking about because none of this is scientifically proven and fair enough. Honestly, fair enough. I think it's fair enough when people criticize the uh, scientific validity of reading cards and tarot cards and oracles and so on. What's really interesting is that I learned about the I Ching through Carl Jung. He used it on himself and he used it on his patients he could, because he really believed it was a good tool to um, prompt certain elements in your unconscious that um, you otherwise wouldn't have had access to. Um, I think a lot of language in the I Ching is very symbolic, so it does a very good job at grabbing onto those symbols and archetypes in your unconscious. I just really want to put it out there first that I'm not trying to forecast anything. I am just really trying to prompt my own unconscious using a reading in regards to um, this pandemic and how I can uh, help those who may be struggling. If you're hearing any white noise in the background, it's because I have my heater on. Um, we're actually in winter in Australia right now, so it's freaking cold. You usually have three coins, you know, any coins that you have lying around the house. I actually have some euros with me, which is kind of random. Um, you throw them. The combination of coins should add up to a certain number. If anyone is interested in doing their own I Ching readings, um, I'll put a link to, in the description. But in this case, I will throw this six times and I will come up with um, the reading, which I will show you. So before you do this, you hold a question or an idea in your mind. In this case, I'm just going to hold the collective in mind, the intention for this video. So basically I ended up having these six lines. They're actually yin and yang lines. So the broken lines are yin, yin lines, sorry, and the straight ones or non-broken lines are yang lines and the dots next to them are stressed so when the lines are stressed they actually turn into the opposite type so um, the stressed yang lines actually turn to yin lines so I have found that our reading corresponds to number 33 in the I Ching the oracle is actually split up into two trigrams um, so the combination of two trigrams um, completes one of the oracles, so this one, 33. Mm -hmm. For each oracle, there's an overall or general reading. Then you have readings for each of the stress lines. So those are kind of like the focal points of your reading. I'll show you guys. 
that is in here. So basically you have your trigram at the bottom there that is supposed to look like a mountain, so the line on top, and then the two lines on the bottom, it kind of resembles a mountain. And then the three straight lines is the creative and that refers to heaven. The visual you're looking at is mountain and the sky, which is kind of beautiful if you think about it. The general reading is so. In the calendar, this hexagram is linked with a six month, July and August. Right now, we are in July, interesting, in which the forces of winter are already showing their influence. And it's literally winter, as I said before. I think flight, as mentioned in the oracle, can be related to panic. So, you know, what I'm getting is that we shouldn't panic in times like this. We should be thinking about retreating into a safer space for all of us. I think it's been hard for a lot of us to be comfortable with retreat, with just staying at home and I mean is it just me or does it feel like we're waiting? I mean in the world oftentimes we feel very helpless due to the things we can't really control such as war or poverty and now a global pandemic that affects the first world as much as it does the third world. A lot of the times it's, it's out of sight, out of mind. We don't really, we're not really in the position to make drastic changes to things or injustices that are going on. It's got its roots in the limitations of human nature. And the majority of the world isn't or hasn't achieved that state of mind or ability to say that we can truly conquer or overcome the world's issue because in part we are responsible for the problems that have risen out of civilization. How does this relate to our pandemic and our current situation? Retreating may feel like waiting. It might make us feel very restless because it magnifies our sense of helplessness in the world. It gives us that sense that we're not doing enough to change our circumstances. Obviously what's going on is that we're all just trying to stay alive um, before the vaccine for COVID-19 comes out. But in a sense, a lot of us may be feeling restless or panicky because realistically or deeply psychologically, we may be feeling very helpless in the situation especially in a Western society. Um, when a problem pops up, we, we want to eradicate it or solve it as soon as possible. But this is one of those things where it's like we need to wait. And in this waiting process, it requires us to be just diligent um, in our ability to stay indoors, to um, resist the temptation of going out and um, living our usual lives. We have to recognize how negative and toxic panic really is. In the I Ching, it's, it's read as flight, the fight and flight response, um, where flight is that sense of um, 
trying to get away from something as soon as possible because of your fear. I love how that last line says, the meaning that lies hidden in such a time is important. So there is this uh, deeper hidden meaning into our collective experience. I think that meaning really is learning to recognize the difference between reacting and responding. So when we're reacting, it throws us off, it makes us fearful, it makes us panic. And that's that's very negative energy to be putting out there. Whereas if we choose to respond rationally to this situation, we will know that we, we need to retreat in a time like this. We need to stay inside. We need to take care of ourselves. We need to take care of each other, do our part and wait patiently for, for the solution. I have so much gratefulness for frontline workers, the vaccine creators, just scientists, doctors, nurses, you know, people who, 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 who really have the ability, the knowledge, and the expertise to, to make a true difference. But the rest of us, I, I really do understand that the majority of us, the collective, can be driven into anxiety and panic. I'm seeing the superior man as someone who is responding rationally um, to the situation rather than the man who is reactive and very panicky and you know, spreading that panic towards other people. The superior man is keeping the inferior man at a distance. So I think it is probably to the benefit of each individual to keep at a distance of people who you feel is adding to your anxiety. People who cannot stop reacting, people who um, just, I, I think just generally a toxic or negative person. Not angrily, but with reserve, so. Uh, not viewing that person with disdain, not spreading hate towards people who, who, who are blatantly negative or blatantly in a frenzy panic but just consciously choosing to not become affiliated with them Okay, that's really beautiful. Don't use hatred. Don't use hatred towards people that you blatantly disagree with. Superior man being symbolized by heaven, you know, stops that mountain at a standstill. Leading by example. If you know someone around you, a family member, a friend or an acquaintance who is very panicky, very anxious, it may be better not to become involved in discussions with them because you know it might make you anxious and panicky as well um, but it's good to uh, to show them to lead by example if you're able to hold yourself in a peaceful and calm manner then you will influence and inspire those around you to act similarly well if you confidently and truly represent something people around you will see that they will pick up on your sincerity, they will pick up on your confidence and they will start to learn by observation. Okay, now I'm just going to move on to our stress lines. When it is time to retreat, it is both unpleasant and dangerous to be held back because then one no longer has freedom of action. So naturally, as we are retreating as a collective, we do feel like our freedom is restricted. I think that's very fair. 
especially in the Western world under a democratic system. Um, it does feel a bit like Big Brother, doesn't it? Like 1984. Truthfully, I'm not a very political person and um, I don't have very strong views on either side, but I do think that many of us are experiencing a very different um, political reality, I guess, than what we're used to. I think what this section or stress line of the oracle is really giving me right now is um, something that's related to a shift in the way Western political systems are functioning at the moment in response to this pandemic and the implications are around the application of democracy, the application of freedom of, of rights, freedom of, um, of choice. Nine in the fourth place. Retreating is a very, it's more of a passive move than fleeing from a situation, isn't it? The principle of non-action. By choosing not to act, by choosing not to act or not to react rather, you're actually doing something. It may even take more willpower to not act than to act, if that makes sense. The reading also mentioned that the inferior man, as we discussed earlier, the man who panics in this situation will degenerate um, without the, the guidance of the superior man and that makes complete sense. If you know people around you, if they are really struggling to adapt to the situation, it's okay to help them out, you know, lead by example. Um, you don't have to become involved with them, you don't have to share all their worries, you don't have to sit down with them every day and have a therapy session with them. It's more so, you know, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to show you what it's like to be able to adapt. I'm going to teach you through my own actions, um, through my own behavior. And I think that's one of the best things you can do for anyone who is struggling with, um, with issues in their life is to lead by example. Because oftentimes when you're uh, actively trying to save someone or help someone, in a difficult situation, they can bring you down with all of their troubles. When you're leading by example, you are teaching on a much more sophisticated level. If you've studied psychology, you would know children learn from observing their parents from other people all the time. And that's how they learn most of their behaviors. So if you're able to influence the people around you by behaving in a positive way in response to the pandemic, then they they will learn unconsciously so that concludes our i ching reading um i was really glad that i did this because before i decided to pick up the oracle i had no idea what this video was going to turn out like i really didn't know what i had inside of me to give to the collective at this at this difficult time because you know, it really, it, it really helps when you're given something that prompts you to think. This article did a really good job at helping me delve into my unconscious for answers. And I know they may not be answers for everyone, but if it helped you, if, if those answers were also answers for you, if they resonated with you, if um, they were able to help you, um, in a time of uncertainty I'm really happy that it did and I think it that reading also solidified a lot of my own beliefs and views in relation to this situation um, and I'm really glad that I did it and I, I was able to share this process with all of you I'm going to do the Taoist thing of non-action and stop talking because I think I've done enough of that today I sincerely hope that 
the viewers of this video have taken something valuable or helpful for them. So remember to stay safe, stay aligned, collected, peaceful, and we will hopefully get through this together as a collective. I will see you guys next time. Bye.